May 2018, the Australian Accounting Standards Board, the AASB, issued an invitation to comment outlining its proposal to remove the reporting entity concept from Australian Accounting Standards. Removing the reporting entity concept would remove the ability for entities to prepare special purpose financial statements when the entity is required by legislation or otherwise for its financial statements to comply with accounting standards. After considering the submissions received in response to the invitation to comment, the AASB has decided to proceed with the removal of the reporting entity concept. The next step for the AASB is to issue an accounting exposure draft, followed by the issuance of amended Australian accounting standards to give effect to the proposed changes. The amended Australian accounting standards are expected to apply to annual reporting periods beginning on or after 1 July 2020. Under the proposed changes, when an entity is required by legislation or otherwise to prepare financial statements in accordance with accounting standards, those financial statements would need to be general purpose financial statements. General purpose financial statements are required to comply with all of the recognition and measurement requirements of accounting standards and the disclosure requirements of either all Australian accounting standards for Tier 1 general purpose financial statements for those entities that have public accountability or otherwise the disclosure requirements of accounting standards reduce disclosure requirements, Tier 2 general purpose financial statements for those entities that do not have public accountability. Importantly, both Tier 1 and Tier 2 general purpose financial statements require a level of disclosure that's significantly greater than what is currently permitted when preparing special purpose financial statements. This will have a significant impact on those entities that currently prepare special purpose financial statements to satisfy their reporting requirements. In addition, entities that have controlled entities would be required to prepare consolidated financial statements and entities that have investments in associates or joint ventures would be required to account for those investments using the equity method. So what are the next steps? If you currently prepare special purpose financial statements to satisfy your reporting obligations, it's important that you evaluate the impact of these proposed changes.